Hi. Uh, you probably don't want to see me, but just enjoy the coast for a minute uh, while we do a little sound check. First of all, have we got anyone listening? Ooh. Can you all hear me? That's my first question. What's the sound quality like? Yes, can hear you fine. Uh, thank you, Attic. Hi, good to see you back out. It's been a while. Yeah, sorry, Matt. Haven't been. Uh... I have been fishing. I just haven't been uploading at the moment. Uh, it becomes a little bit of a uh, hamster wheel of uploading and everything else. But I have still been out here enjoying the fishing. We've got a break in the weather. Fantastic. So this particular mark. Um, this particular mark fishes well as soon as that tide uh, starts hitting over that sandbank. You can see in the uh, thumbnail. I'm just gonna, are those waves gonna knock that rod rest over? <laughs> That's one to watch out for. Yeah, we're on a bit of a steep bank here. There's like a bank that comes down. Um, so you see we've got two, two rods on there. Rod on the left. Uh, is out with a cascade rig with squid tip, uh, lugworm tip with squid, and then the other rod that's the dark black coloured rod on the right hand side that's in relatively close with a big bit of squid. I'm hoping, I'm hoping after we've had all that sort of blowy weather, haven't we? I'm just hoping that uh, after that the conger and the bass might be mopping up some of the things under here. But I'm yet to have a good bass this year. Frustrating. Um, but I have had them from this spot before, so you never know, you never know. So I thought I'd go live uh, just to say hello to everyone again. And as you can see, it's quite a nice day, isn't it? Any minute now, that surf's gonna take out those rods. So I will move them back in a minute watching those rod tips. No braid on the reels today. I'm hoping you can hear me as I walk away from the camera so if someone can let me know if you can hear me now while I'm at the rods. Fifteen pound monofilament on both of these. 0.3 mil. It's quite nice to fish with. I think this is Asso line uh, with tapered leaders. As I say, we've got fresh lug on the one on the left and the big bait on this one. If this one goes over, it's going to be something half decent. So yeah, hopefully you can hear me and then we can uh, get into this fishing. So, could you hear me when I went down to the rods? That's my question. Always hoping for a codlin, and you can hear me fine. Uh, this is sort of like a favorite spot of mine, so I'm not really uh, gonna give away exactly where we are, especially if I get something half decent, so. No apologies there, but I do want to, I want you to join in, but I don't want you to know exactly where I am, if that makes sense. If you fish a lot, I think you'll understand that. But we do give away a lot of good marks for you to try uh, on the channel, how to get there and parking and stuff like that. So I'm not far from Hastings and we are in East Sussex. Is that, <laughs> is that all right? How are you all? Who's been fishing then? Who's been out there? Sounds good, that's great. Thanks, Tim, for that. Um, and thanks, Mui Smith. Because YouTube has uh, changed its handles, I might not recognize some of the names on here. I know I've spoken to most of you 
over the last sort of three or four years online in some way but if your handles change because of your YouTube if you have a YouTube channel then do let us know and we're getting a little tap on that rod on the left I'll move these a bit closer so you can see them You can see there's a big, uh, hang on, what's he going to say? He's not going to say he's a big fish. There is a big dip right in front of us, like a shelf. You can see how the waves are breaking behind me. It's a classic place to lose a fish there as well. See where that's breaking? Right. I'm just going to feel this, getting little taps. I'm not sure there's anything on here though. At the very least, I can show you the setup we've got. Before I get too wet. There's a bit of weight in this line, but there is a heck of a current, so I think we've probably got something small on here, maybe a whiting. Let's have a look. Sort of bring it in. Uh, yeah, we're all thinking it might be a cod. It's a whiting. So we have got something. I'm going to put this one back. It's a bit small to eat and a bit big for bait. So I'll try and put it back. They don't, unfortunately, a little bit foul hooked on this other side as well. But there you go. A whiting in sort of conditions you expect to find whiting, really. Bright autumn days. So. There you go, you can tell that that's not a cod. It is a whiting. They're a little bit maligned, these whiting around here. Um, I mean, obviously they put a, a bend on the rod. Oh, what's that? I'll show, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, yeah, they do put a bend on the rod. <laughs> no waterproofs today. Um, but they can take the bait from other fish. Oh. That's just washed up. Yeah, so the rig, uh, five ounce leads, grip leads, and these are cascade rigs. Uh, those that watch the channel know I use these quite a lot. They're really good because they keep the bait, if I can get the thing to focus. Uh, keep the bait nice and neat and then I always get them made up by Jay's rigs actually um, someone was asking the other day do I make my own rigs I do uh, but Jay at Jay's rigs on Facebook makes them a lot better and um, yeah the last one goes onto the hook on there but I do need to bait up so we'll put some worm and squid on there if you keep an eye on that other rod I'll do that So yeah, I'll just put some lug on here. They've got little bait stops, which are really good stops of uh, the worm flying off the hook. I need to do this sitting down really, and then I'll show you the results. So yeah, hopefully in the chat, um, do chat amongst yourselves as well. I know a lot of you know each other. We're all fishing up and down the country. I 
hope that someone on the chat is saying they've caught some codling because I've not caught one from the beach for 20 years. <laughs> right, I'm going to tip the lugworm with some squid. Um, more that it just keeps that lugworm on a little bit firmer. Um, I get the idea that when you when they're all whiting around, there's quite a lot of them sort of plucking at the worm, and sometimes they can suck it off the hook. I think. I think that's what happens. So they can strip a hook, but with a bit of squid on the end, which I'll show you in a minute. Just makes it a little bit firmer, harder for them to do. Squid being a little bit harder. Now, I'm not watching that other rod, but I should be. Uh, I'll come back and see who's been getting a cod in a minute, but that's all it is, simple bait really. Ideally I want to pick up a pouting or something I can use for the bass and conger here. Uh, I don't know your thoughts on live baiting, it's always a little bit controversial. I'll always maintain it is, regardless of what you think, it is a very effective way to catch bigger fish. But at the moment that second rod's got squid on it. Got the sunglasses somewhere as well, I'll have to look back where they went. Now this cascade rig Probably see how that works a bit better. It's very hard to film and fish. But, but basically, there you go. Cascade rig on the top, and then you've got another snood on the bottom that ties in there. So we're just doing a nice lazy cast with this one. Take that bait a little bit. They're so nice to cast, these continental rods. And then what I'm doing here, I'm just feeling for that lead to hit the bottom, uh, which it has. And then it's got those grips on it, hasn't it? So I make sure that those grips engage into the, it'll be shingle actually now, where I've hit that. And the tide's running quite nicely, so that usually means a fish will hook themselves. You see the bend in the rod tip. I'll swap these round because they're crossing over lines. And that's it. I suppose I could get a dogfish on this one. Hopefully, conga or bass. Right, let's come and look at your messages. God, it is, it is lovely out here. It's really nice to have a break in that weather. I think you might be all right, those of you that are not fishing today or can get down at the weekend. Cool, 25 people, lovely. That's what we want now. Uh, it's not Chesil, uh, Codlin from Hive. Matt, you're the man, yes. Beautiful. How big was that codling? Hi Dave K. Yeah, uh, hi Stephen Wilkinson. Um, why mono on both? Uh, I like mono on the live bait one. That's what I was sort of saying earlier. Uh, and yeah, I, do, I think it's just the first spool I came came across. 
uh, no real technical reason for that. 40 centimetres, well that sounds like a good enough codling for our neck of the woods. We seem to catch them, uh, as I say, I'm in the uh, well, Hastings and St Leonard's area. I am hoping for a, a codling in Gary Birch, but realistically, uh, I mean, I, if I get a keepable bass in terms of size, I'm not going to keep it obviously, but um, something over 45 on a bass would be a success. But yeah, do enjoy. Let me go. Hopefully you can hear the sound of the, the waves. Sounds great out there. I'll move those rods back now. I did bring a I did bring a Nelly with me as well. Just when I move them back. Loosen the spool, bring everything back together. Should get a better look at the rod tips now. Keeping those high. just to avoid that surf pushing it down. And then normally I'll keep them this high, but I'm gonna drop the tips down a bit so that you can see. Remembering to tighten a spool. Right, how's that look? Can you see the rod tips? Now I've got to find the sunglasses are dropped. That's probably in the backwash. I'm the sort of angler that if I'm getting bites, well on a smaller on the smaller hooks, I just leave it. Normally in these conditions the fish will hook itself and there's obviously two hooks on there on that cascade rig. Oh that sea's really loud as it hits the shingle. I hope you're hearing it all. Hi Sam, how you doing? Yeah, everything's fine. I know I've not been uploading videos recently, there's no dark secret or anything like that, just simply having a little break. I'm still fishing, uh, had a small eyed ray the other day and some white, oh, loads of whiting, which we seem to be getting today. And I'll move those move those rod round so you can see a bit better. Yeah, I'm fishing Hastings and St Leonard's at the moment. Um, we've got the beach profiles changed quite a lot down here in Sussex. 
And we've almost got, we've even had people think it looks like Chesil Beach down here, it's getting so steep. Bass on the ears done for the year is a question coming in from Steve. Uh, it does look inviting, doesn't it? But um, it's not clear enough for my hard plastics here. I think he'd be working a bit too hard. Uh, no, not done for the year. It's really, I mean, bass will take lures right into December, but the problem is the conditions. You know, the fish are there. There's, there's good fish um, and bigger fish as well, the bigger females this time of year. However, it's just getting out there um, is really tricky. Stronger winds we've been having. But if you had a clear day or succession of northerlies here, you could certainly be out on the lures for the bass. And uh, you know, as I keep saying on the social media, I've had bass in, in December of fly fishing in the past. Um, there's a good reason to think a lot of bass uh, uh, stay all year round. They don't go off to spawn, um, and they, you know, hole up in harbours and places like Chesil. So there is some evidence to suggest that. So don't give up on the lures quite yet. There'll still be. I mean, even the water temperature. I'm sure the seasons are getting later and later, aren't they? Here we are in November. Uh, could, in theory, be wearing a t-shirt. Who's at work then? Who should be working? Well, I've got to go back tomorrow. Ah, the bandit frogster. Hello, welcome. Uh, Frogster's one of our admins, and um, I never tell her when I'm going live just to keep her on her toes. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I just thought it was quite a nice time to go live, really, just to check in with you all. The weed, there are no problems with weed whatsoever today. A little bit of a slack, slack line on that bigger bait. I think we're going to bring that in now, pack that in, pack that up with some more squid. I'll leave this one out here for about 35 minutes. Well, we've got some in. It's not fighting. I'm going with a dogfish or a strat conga. Oh. Well, how bizarre is this? I've hooked. I've hooked some old line. <laughs> so what's happened here? Uh, this is the bait that we had out, so that's fine, but I've actually reeled in. I snapped off earlier on some braid, and I've managed to catch it again, and it feels like there's something extra heavy on here, so I've got to use a knife, and let's have a look. Oh, this could be quite interesting. I don't know if you can see that. I should be able to recover what I lost earlier. Right. We'll deal with this in a minute. But this here is the lost line. At the very least, I'll be able to get my 
rig back. So, I know it's like a hand lining in in. <laughs> Although, there's nothing too heavy on here. So the good thing is I'll be able to um, get my line back. I'm not going to leave all this litter on the beach. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's the undertow. I've never reeled in a fish using my hands like that. <laughs> Well, good God. Oh. That's a big old dogfish. Um, fish on, it was a fish on. Uh, what's happened here? Uh, what's happened here is Earlier on, I snapped off on this lead and I managed to rehook it. And on it is this, it's a very big dogfish. Farawee around here and another whiting, which is very much dead. So I'm going to put the dogfish back, but it just goes to show I had already caught those. <laughs> Let's try and unhook this one. Two hungry chompers. Two hungry indeed. So yeah, this is a... If around here, that is quite a big dogfish. Look at that. All right, it? Tough old things, these. The whiting's had it. Uh, yeah, we'll put this one back. Okay, so there are fish here. Dogfish do like it after it's been rough. Two hungry chompers. I like that. So I'm just gonna pack the squid on here. And then I use the bait elastic just to tighten it up. Well, that was a, a success of sorts, wasn't it? I don't like losing gear. And to think that I'd lost the gear and on it was a nice big dogfish and uh, a whiting. Just using this bait elastic. It's very thin, this bait elastic. I've seen people use uh, shearing elastic. It's not quite the same. This stuff keeps that bait well presented. More likely to hook a fish and keep that gape clear. So in the absence of any live pouting, I'm gonna cast that one out. Two hungry chompers. We should write copy frog stuff. So this one can be kept in close. That's where the bass will be if they're there. We'll be running along the bottom of this sort of um, steep shingle beach. Okay, so the squid's gone out. 
We know there's fish there because we've had whiting and a doggy. I know that the camera's into the sun, but unfortunately, on a south facing beach during the day, that's what you've got to see. Right, what have you been saying? Doggy on the beach, quite a big one as well. Yeah. First cod. Oh, <laughs> you don't need a dogfish if you can get a cod. Good to see you back. Conditions do look good, uh, Nicholas. Oh, hi, uh, Nicholas. Good weather is changing worldwide. Yeah. Two hungry chompers. <laughs> Greetings. Right. Can you see the rod tips on there? That's better, isn't it, if I do that. Right. So if you just joined us, I don't think you have. I think we're with the same people here, but... That's what had happened, that and a dogfish brought that in very unceremoniously. But I have managed to keep the weight and save the planet by bringing in some of that braid. I don't know if you caught what I was saying earlier, where the surf hits the bottom of this shingle here, it um, can cause a bit of a problem if you're retrieving in a fish, so you've got to time the fish to the surf coming in. Uh, just off camera here, I'm wrestling a dog for a whiting. Hang on. <laughs> oh, well, I'm really pleased I've got that line back. I hate the idea of it just sitting there, and especially with those fish on it. I've kept the weight. Uh, 40 of us now, which is quite good for, uh, for me on a live. And hopefully the sound's working. Bandit was going fishing today, but chores took over. Don't give me that. But if you'd have told me, I would have hopped over seeing... Oh. Uh, seeing as the pier dangling a no-go. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, Hastings Pier is closed for those that uh, fish down here in St. Leonard's. Uh, it's a bit of a shame really, you can get some good fish off that pier and obviously it benefits those with less mobi, especially with these shingle beaches now being so steep. westerly today. The reason I'm at this particular spot, it fishes quite well. As soon as that sea hits the bottom of the shingle beach off the sand, and then again there's another little bit where about an hour before high tide uh, it fishes well, which is what we're on now really.
some reason I'm not seeing any chat come up. I don't know if that's... Oh, no, I've got it. I've got it. Closed until April 2023. 41 watching, 24 likes. Thank you very much. Oh, it's good to hear the sounds good, Dave. It does bug me. It's one of the main reasons I didn't do the lives, because, you know, you get that sound of the wind. Um, uh, sort of put me off doing lives, really. You can pick out the baits in these conditions. You've just got to remember that a lot of that rod tip movement is, um, uh, a lot of the rod tip movement there is, is just that wave movement in front of us. What we're really looking for is this one to go lurching over. I'll be quicker to respond to this bait, this is the big squid, than I will this one. That's a good tip on the sound. Yeah, I mean, I have got a wireless road with a lav mic, um, dead cat over that, and that's probably the best you can hope for when you're out on the beach for the wind noise. But what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna tighten into this one. Whiten should have found this by now, if they're there in any numbers. See, there's a lot more, not used to using um, monofilament on these, a lot more springy in there. All right, let's see what we got. Well, we've got something here. Uh, it's not thudding. We might have a couple of fish on, but they might be whiting. What are they? Oh, it's a little bit bigger than a whiting. It is. Another doggy. There we go. <laughs> a nice dog. You can see this one is a lot smaller than that last one. If we're going to count the last one. A dog and a dogfish. So uh, you kind of knew that this was a dogfish, not a cod or a bass. Well. Because it, it doesn't fight. That's like a dead weight on there. And that was on the intended 
for the whiting. So ah, they're pretty tough, the dogfish as well. That should survive. So you can see that difference though. That's a normal sized dogfish. The other one we had was pretty big, wasn't it? And that's dogfish eating lugworm, not on the fish baits. So worth checking these size four hooks. They might have been bent out of shape by the dogfish. Tough old fish, those. Oh, hang on, I just said they weren't on the fish baits, but I did, this was tipped with squid, wasn't it? So we'll do the same again. Lug with the squid. If there's anyone still watching, I'll come and have a look in a minute. For those that are there, what a glorious day. Right, cut some squid. Big swell here. I'm sure any minute it's going to cover us. Let's go over the boots. I'm going to move you back in a minute. It looks like a bit of a dogfish fest, uh, and I've got to log offline shortly uh, to do some filming for the main channel. So we'll cast this one out, give it a few minutes, and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next live. Cascade rig is up and ready. Go. A little bit of an arty shot there. Okay, been superb watching, even though you tried to surprise me. Always on a toes slash webbies. Wind has dropped here in Western Supermare. Yeah, tonight would be a good one, uh, Sean. Still here, wish you were there. Free meal for chompers. Have I tried Warrior Square? Caught me. Yeah, it's good. Good mark down there. Bit out of focus. You're right. Okay. Right. Well, thanks ever so much for watching. Um, I'll call that a day and. Um, I'm going to carry on fishing. You can always keep up to date on Instagram or YouTube. Cheers, guys.